So now that we have our users on the account and workflows assigned to their roles, we can start creating missions. To do that, we'll head into the Manage Mission section, and you'll see we have our list of existing missions. As long as you have the permission, you'll see the Add Mission button in the top right corner, and we could simply jump into a new mission from here. However, if we head back to the Airspace dashboard, we can also start a new mission right from the Airspace screen. So, as mentioned before, we can find the location for our flight just by zooming and clicking around, or we can search for that location via address, lat long coordinate, or airport designation. So once we have our desired area, let's double check our airspace advisories. In this case, the blue status is letting us know this is controlled airspace at KRDU, class Charlie, and we will require authorization to fly here. But the blue card that matches that status is letting us know we can get instant or auto approval up to 400 feet in this area. So let's go ahead and create this new mission. You'll see we're presented with a few different options here. To start out, we can add any appropriate tags to our mission to help filter out our data down the road. We'll cover more on tags in another video. Next, we're gonna to wanna to give the mission a status. And in this case, since we know it's controlled airspace, but we have not filed for authorization, I'm gonna mark this as pending. When it comes to mission titles, it's recommended that we follow a repeatable pattern to make this easy for the pilots. It can be as simple as naming their, their facility location, their business unit, followed by their use case, followed by maybe a particular customer or asset number. That can vary widely depending on our industry or organization. So if you do need any assistance there, again, please feel free to reach out to the team and we'd be glad to help. For this example, I'm gonna use a similar format to what I just mentioned and say I'm with a particular team, with a particular use case, and we have a specific purpose for this mission. Below that, we can customize the start time of this mission if we're planning it out a little further in the future. We can leave that for today. And as far as the start time and duration goes, we can be specific and schedule our missions throughout the day. In this case, let's choose to make this an all day mission. Now, as we get down to the location, you'll see we can enter address or lat long coordinate here as well. And on top of this, we can also apply a mission area, which will help identify the flight boundaries for this mission. It's easily adjustable by grabbing the corners and moving it closer to our desired area of interest. And we can help specify for the pilot what area they'll be flying in. And we can even update the pin and let them know where they'll be op operating from. Moving along, we will need to assign a pilot in command to this mission, so I'll add myself, but note that you can add additional pilots if there are teams going out and flying together, or we could also add additional users as visual observers. You'll also notice we have a custom option there, so you can enter in any role for the mission that you desire, such as a sensor operator, an inspector, a trainer, an engineer, etc. If the user is not on the account, you can also add that information over in the mission notes if needed. The bottom section with pre-assigned aircraft and batteries is meant to be more prescriptive as an admin assigns this mission out to a pilot so that they know which equipment they need to check out from the office or the warehouse uh, and bring with them in the field. If the pilots tend to be more one-to-one -one with the drone, meaning they have the same drone in their possession all the time, this step is not gonna be necessary. If I jump into the procedures section of the mission, 
we briefly mentioned that we could assign different workflows from our roles default workflow. So in this case, if I wanted to assign a nighttime workflow, maybe I'm doing survey work where I'm usually doing inspection work, you can then customize the workflow for this specific mission. However, if we leave that blank, the pilot will still be presented with their default workflow. Also note that you can attach any necessary documents and photos to the missions, things like private land use agreements, authorizations, COAs, paper checklists or spreadsheets, if needed, can be attached here to maintain that record for historical reporting purposes. Let's go ahead and create this mission so we can file our Lance authorization and move it into an approved status. So now we have our mission. We can take a look at that airspace again. We can see all the other details we filled out. And just above our airspace section is our authorizations tab, reminding us we need to get Lance. So let's click on that, remembering that this location is gonna let us request up to 400 feet for instant approval. So when we click the Get Lance button, it's going to include some details from that mission, such as the mission name, the pilot in command, as well as the date and start time. So in this case, it is recognizing that we can request up to 400 feet, so giving us another reminder here. Worth mentioning, we can also file Lance on behalf of other pilots, as long as we have that visibility into the account. And last but not least, setting that start time. There are some reminders below as to some of the limitations for the system. Nothing else to acknowledge on this screen so we can push forward. On this step, it's doing a quick check to make sure we have a valid request. It will come back green if so. If not, it will come back red and you'll be provided some more information below as to what the issue might be. Whether we're trying to file for authorization outside of controlled airspace, possibly when the tower's closed, we could have too many authorizations open already, but you'll be provided some of that feedback here in the notes. Moving forward, the last step is going to include details from the pilot's profile. There's nothing to acknowledge, but we do have some links below for reference should you need them. So we can then agree and submit. And this Lance is now going to go live to the FAA. We'll get that authorization back immediately because we were in an auto approval zone. And now we have our Lance authorization here on the web. So the pilot that's been selected will receive a text message letting them know their Lance authorization has been approved. And we could also PDF print this authorization or even duplicate it for another flight in the future. However, let's head back to our missions page and take a look at our mission to make sure that Lance authorization is now visible on the mission. So now that we have our authorization, we could say this mission can be approved. So I'm going to edit it one more time and move this mission into the approved status. Now that's going to be the last step needed to push this mission through to the pilot's mobile app now that it's been assigned to them and approved. Before we jump into that mission and review the workflow, let's quickly review from the mobile app what mission creation looks like. 